In this lecture, we are going to discuss oxazolidinone, the most important antibiotics against the gram-positive bacteria. In this lecture, we will discuss the two most important oxazolidinone, linazolid and the tadizolids. So, let's get started. First of all, we will look at the pharmacokinetics of the oxazolidinone. So, basically, these antibiotics can be given through the oral route as well as through the IV route. Okay, that is the most important thing. This medication can be given through the IV route or you can say oral route. So, here are basically the two most important route of drug administration. Okay, next you will see there is a difference between the metabolism of the linazolid and the tadizolid. So, basically linazolid linazolid is basically oxidized through the oxidation process while the tadizolid is actually metabolized tadizolid is metabolized through the sulfation process that is the important thing about the mechanism of the two most important drugs linazolid and the tadizolid but the linazolid is basically excreted through the renal as well as non-renal sources. But the tadizolid is basically excreted through the bile duct. It means that it is actually excreted in our uh, feces. Okay. If we look at the mechanism, how oxazolidinone works on the bacteria. So, first of all, oxazolidinone will act on the ribosome. Okay, first of all, we will see the different composition of the ribosome, bacterial ribosome. Okay, so basically bacterial ribosome has two components, 50S ribosomal unit and the 30S ribosomal unit. Okay, and you can also see the ribosome is basically made up of two components. First one is the protein and second thing is the ribosomal RNA. These are basically the two most important component of the ribosome. Okay. If someone takes the oxazolid, you know, like the linazolid and the tadizolid, okay, this antibiotic will act on the ribosomal RNA, specifically 23S ribosome. As for sedimentation rate, we actually we categorize the different components of the ribosome on the basis of the sedimentation. Okay, so basically, ribosomal RNA of the 50S subunit having 20S sedimentation rate. Okay, so basically, when the oxazolidinone bind to the ribosomal RNA, it actually block the initiation complex formation for the protein synthesis. So initiation complex, you will see the 50S ribosomal subunit, 30S ribosomal unit and in between them you will see the presence of the messenger RNA. That is actually the initiation complex for the protein synthesis. Okay. And ultimately you will see the formations of the protein. But when the oxazolidinone bind to the ribosomal RNA, then it actually block the formation of the initiation complex when there is no initiation complex then there is no protein synthesis and ultimately they show the bacteriostatic effect but for some species linazolid can be bactericidal like the streptococcus species okay if we look at the resistance so basically if the bacteria develop resistance in the 50s ribosomal unit then the oxazolidinone can't bind to the 50S subunit. When there is no binding, then there is no effect of the antibiotic. So that is the alteration or the modification, modification in the binding site. That is the resistance mechanism of the bacteria binding site. If we look at the spectrum, so how oxazolidinone is effective against the different uh, bacteria. So, they are effective against the streptococcus species. Streptococcus. And most importantly, they are good for the penicillin resistance streptococcus pneumoniae. Okay. And they can also be used for the 
staphylococcus and most importantly they are good for the MRSA methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus and you can also see the enterococcus species and they are also good for the vancomycin resistance enterococcus VRE so basically oxazolidinone linazolid is good for the resistant species of the bacteria and it can also be used for the TB mycobacterium tuberculosis as well so that basically the antimicrobial spectrum of the oxazolidinone if we look at the adverse effects so first one you will see the GIT disturbance GIT upset you will see the in which you will see the nausea vomiting and the diarrhea okay next you will see the rash on the skin here is the second adverse effects of the oxazolidinone and third one you will see the headache headache is another important adverse effects of the oxazolidinone and you can also see the thrombocytopenia thrombocytopenia low platelets count and you will see the low platelets count in the cbc report in the cbc report you will see the all the blood counts like the rbcs wbcs and the platelets and you can easily see the low platelets count in the cbc report and last most important you will see the serotonin syndrome syndrome that is the most important if, if the patient is taking the oxazolidinone along with the other uh, drugs like the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors and the monoamine oxidase inhibitors or foods that contain high amount of the tyramine like the cheese hot dogs and the fava beans so ultimately you will see the serotonin syndrome or you can say serotonin toxicity so basically serotonin is actually a neurotransmitter and ultimately due to the increase in the levels of the serotonin you will see the three most important symptoms first one is the altered mental status in which you will see the agitations and the pressured speech and second most important symptoms you will see in the serotonin syndrome will be the autonomic dysfunction it means that autonomic nervous system is not working properly and you will ultimately see the different symptoms like the tachycardia diaphoresis and the diarrhea and third most important symptoms you will see in the syndrome will be the neuromuscular excitation in which you will see the most importantly clonus tremor and the seizures so this is all about the oxazolidinone, the most importantly linazolid and the tadizolid. If you still have any question, you may ask in the comment section. Thank you so much.